Again, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, we are moving into our success uh, course, and we have uh, spoken about the framework, and we are really in the final part where we are trying to put everything uh, together as well. So today, as usual, I'm going to talk about the framework very, very quickly, and then I'll talk about the the, the, the last part of it, the most important part that builds on all other parts, which is relationship management. And in the relationship management, I want to talk today about conflict management. And again, I will seek some feedback on uh, developing others. So as we all recall, the framework looks like this. It has both a self component and a social or relational components. These are the two columns. And the two rows that you have is one related to the awareness and the other one is related to the regulation or management. So the first quadrant will have the self-awareness. We are aware of our emotions and, and so on. And that will hopefully lead us to self-management so we could manage our self, control our anger and things like that. And then we also use our self-awareness to develop the social awareness, which is awareness of what's happening in our surrounding, in our teams, in our companies, in our families, and so on, so forth. And for that to eventually lead us to relationship management. We repeated this many times. Happiness is the quality of the relationship that we have. And that's the relationship at work, the relationship at home, the relationship at, at the school. You can, you can reflect upon that and, and I, I'm sure you'll reach a similar conclusion. You are happy when you are loved, respected, and, and people feel, um, feel for you. So today we will want to talk about conflict and I would like to start with a question. Did you experience conflict? Yeah, who, who, who experienced conflict? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay. Would you please uh, show us the hands that are being raised? Thank you. Yeah. So you've experienced conflict. Yeah. Can anyone tell me the, the, the conflict that you have experienced? Or what's what, what is the conflict that you have experienced? Please. Madi, would you like to try? Just try. Many conflicts. Give me one. Speak to the mic, please. Mm. I conflict with my teacher. Right. Not teacher, the examination. The examination. Teacher. Yes. Uh, because in my exam I have uh, three hours. Three hours right. for, for deciding my exercise. Yes. Uh, but but she gave me two two thirty hours. Two hours and half two hours and a half. Right, right. Uh, but it's not right. Uh, I conflict with Right, right. Very good. So, so you, you thought the examination period is three hours. Yes. Your teacher thought it's two hours and a half. And you felt this is not right yes. because you don't have enough time. Yes. So that's an example of a conflict. Anyone else can tell us a conflict? Maybe did, did you guys have a conflict in your team this semester? Who had conflict within the team this semester? Raise your hand. Now, if you, if you don't raise your hand, you are telling a lie, right? Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is a normal, natural process. Okay, who did not have a conflict within the team this semester? Raise your hand. You did not have a conflict at all. Okay, two, three, four. No conflict. 
Okay, you see the fact, Amar, how many of you in the team? Five. Five. Uh, can Amar's team raise their hand, please? So the fact that you are the only one from the team who raised his hand it indicates maybe they had a conflict, but you, you, you didn't notice it. Maybe. Okay, so, so those who did not raise your hand, what, what happened to you? you? You experienced a conflict? You did not experience a conflict? You don't know what has happened to you? Or because there is no conflict now, you just want to forget about the past? Yeah. But you see, this is a very important thing. Now, now who, is, who is still having some sort of a conflict within the team? Honestly speaking, we, we can help you uh, work on, on, on those because when the project that you're working on is a team project, if you don't fix the conflict, no matter what you do, you, you won't be able to succeed because it requires everyone to pull together. So anyone still having conflict? with? I won't ask you to speak, you just tell me. So did you raise your hand or not? Yes. You raise your hand that you don't have conflict? You have some conflict. So there is some conf conflict. Why you didn't say? Oh, you, you just, you, okay. So you had actually some conflict. Okay. So, so we do experience uh, a conflict. And if you notice, I mean, Madi shared his experience. What are the common thing? There's a disagreement between normally two parties. So there, there was himself and his teacher. And, and normally we can call this a conflict only when it has tension, emotions, you felt very strongly about it, you felt bad. Not every disagreement uh, uh, will, will lead to conflict. So for example, for example if uh, you want to sell this to me and you think it's worth $100, and I think it's worth $1. That's a disagreement, but that's not conflict. I just say, okay, so it's fine. That's, there is a disagreement, but if I say, if I say, you say it's $100, and I say $1, I say, what? Do you know how much this thing cost me? You know, do you know this is an insult? The fact that you are saying, then that's, that's becoming a conflict. But it could be just a disagreement, and then we just agree to disagree. So, so the conflict has to have some sort of escalation in terms of tension, emotions. As a matter of fact, it can even go to violence. So, so a tension between nations could lead to war and people could die. Uh, tension between people could lead to violence and, 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 and all sorts of things, terrorism and, and all bad things that happen because of uh, conflict. Now, this is a very important thing. If we agree to, to disagree, there's no conflict. So we agree that he thinks it's 100, I think it's 100, I respect his opinion, and he respects mine. There's, there's no issue, there's no conflict if we do it uh, that way. And hence, we have couples, married people, who, who have different religions, who have different political beliefs and orientations, and the fact that they decide not to break the bond among themselves, there is no conflict. Now, when will this be conflict is when there is a fight, when there is a divorce, because of this then it becomes a conflict. So that's, that's how we define uh, conflict. So now my question is, where does conflict start? Where do you think the starting point of a conflict? And that's a question. Um, so wait for the mic and say it into the mic. Ali. Yes. Cannot hear you. I also cannot hear you. Can you speak louder? Can you say misunderstanding? So, so, so he said conflict start with a misunderstanding. Good. You, who agrees with him? Conflict starts with a misunderstanding. Can you show us the hand, please? Thank you. Okay. 
Now, now, a question is where does the conflict start? So where does misunderstanding start? Where? Where? In our hands? In our mouth? In our mouth? So, that, so, so the way somebody says something, but what instructs the mouth to deliver this? The brain. So actually, the conflict, if you recall, you know, we said everything starts where? Even a physical thing will start in, in the brain. It starts as a thought. And, and, and what does, and, and it happens, you are exactly right, because of misunderstanding. So when there is a misunderstanding, normally this is how uh, conflict happens. So it's all related to the thought, to the brain, to the mind. And this is something, interestingly, we have been working on training for the entire semester. So we have been, hopefully, working on developing our minds and our brains, exercising them throughout this uh, semester. Now, the mis misunderstanding can be misunderstanding of self. So I could misunderstand myself. And, and this happens really when, when we don't know what we want. So, so for example, I'm not very sure what I want to be. But sometimes I want to do this, sometimes I want to do that. Sometimes I join foundation in engineering. After a while, I think, or oh, maybe art is also nice. And this, this could create some, that misunderstanding could contribute to conflict maybe with your parents. They say, you, you need to fix your mind. You cannot just keep on changing. So if we do not know what we want, this could start a conflict. Now, when we do not know what we feel, this could also be a source of a conflict. Now, do you remember when we talked about emotions and how they set us in motion? So if we are not sure what is our emotional state, and then we are unable to control it, we could actually escalate even the conflict from being emotional to being physical to saying something that is very difficult to uh, eventually uh, repair. So what is, what is the antidote for the self-misunderstanding? How can we fix this? How can we develop a better understanding of ourself. What do you think? I'm sure you all know. What do you think? So I'm misunderstanding myself. What within our course will help you or me have better self-understanding. Which part of the um, framework relates to having a better self-understanding? I want him to try. He knows already. Please speak into the microphone. Do you recall the framework? Do you know what's the framework? You, you speak here, please. Do you know what's this framework? The emotional intelligence framework? Okay, so it has four parts, right? Can you, can you, you know, tell me what these parts are? Self? Self-awareness, yeah. Self-management and relationship management. So which part do you think is related to understanding self better? Self-awareness. Self Self-awareness, self -awareness. exactly right. It's self-awareness. So, so self-awareness is really the antidote for this. If we are aware of ourselves, we really know. We understand ourselves, we know ourselves, we know what do we want, we know how, how do we feel, we know how we should feel, and it is, uh, it's going to create a better understanding for ourselves. With him, 
that the source of uh, the, the reason for, mis uh, for conflict is mi misunderstanding. And misunderstanding could be that I misunderstand myself. And we have been thus far working on creating a self-aware individual, a person who is aware of his or her existence, his or her emotions and feelings, his or her strengths, challenges, a person who is able to assess, to have a, an accurate self-assessment. And the more we move into this journey, the more we will be able to be in control of this source of conflict, that which is self-misunderstanding. Now, we can also misunderstand others. And this happens when we do not know what others want. So someone comes here, we don't know what does he or she wants. Then, if we think that he or she is meaning us bad, he, has, he or she has a bad uh, intention towards us, this could actually lead to a conflict. Now, in the example that I have, that I have uh, just uh, exhibited here, he wants to sell this for a hundred dollar and I think it's worth one dollar. Now if he thinks that I said one dollar to disrespect the value of his goods or to disrespect him or to insult him, then maybe this is not the way I feel and he misunderstood me. So if he has understood, misunderstood me, this could become a source of conflict. So when we are not sure what do others want, or how others feel, or we don't know what their intentions are, that opens the door for misunderstanding them. If I don't know how do you feel now, if I don't know what do you really want, if I don't know what your intentions are, that is going to open the door for a lot of misunderstanding. And if I allow this misunderstanding to happen, then conflict may become the, um, uh, the result. So if I were to try to take this into the uh, team conflict that is happening within your teams, I won't mention names, but a number of you have came to me and shared with me the conflict that you guys have been having. Not everyone, but a number of you. So if a, a, a person thinks that the other team members are not serious, they are not actually bringing any value to the team, and they are just depending, they are free riders, they want the other person to do the work, and they just want the credit. Now, this may be an accurate description, but it may not be the accurate description. So if this was a misunderstanding on the part of the person who came to see me to complain about the team members, and uh, in actual fact, uh, the, the team members were maybe late because they had a car accident. They were late to the meeting because they had a car accident or they did not show up on that day because they were sick or there is a very, very good reason for this to happen. But because I'm saying maybe hypothetically, the person who complained because he or she did not know that, they did not know what they want or how they felt or what their intention are when, when they did not show up, then they misunderstood the partner and because of this misunderstanding, something has happened and, and, and that could lead to com conflict. So Kashminda, can you tell us again the, how misunderstanding others could lead to, um, to conflict? How misunderstanding others could lead to... Speak as loudly, loudly as you can. So we talked about how misunderstanding ourselves could lead to conflict. So now what about misunderstanding others and how does that lead to conflict?
Okay, so he's trying to help you. You can do it together. Tell him. Tell him loudly. Yes. Um. Misunderstanding others doesn't mean you don't really know the person. And yes, yes. And and maybe we don't know how they feel. Lead to maybe you don't know what they want. And we from don't us. know what their intentions are. Yeah, that's all. Yes. And that leads to us superimposing yeah. our feeling on them. Yeah. So, for example, if I am if I am here and I am delivering my lecture. And let's say, let's say you speak to him. Okay? Let's say you speak to him. Okay? So I give you an example, Kashminder. So I see two students, and one of them is talking to the other. Then if I don't know what's the intention, maybe there's a very important thing that this student is telling the other students. There's a very important thing. But I thought wrongly that this is a sign of disrespect. To the, for the class, right? So, so let, let me pick this on. Why did I pick you? Do you know why I picked you? What, do, you do you know why I picked you among everyone in the class? Why did I pick you? Do you know why I picked you? You don't know, right? Okay, so the, the person that you were talking to will tell you why I picked you. Can you speak into the, into the mic? Why do you think I picked him? Because you may might no, no, think that don't, don't try to he analyze me. is not paying just tell attention me why to the lecture him. and you misunderstood you that just he's doing something. Just tell me why I picked him. That he's doing he himself. was doing something, right? What was he doing? <laughs> he was talking to you. So that's why I picked you. So, so, so that's the reason sleeping. why I picked you. Okay, because you were talking to him. So I looked at you for quite some time. And I knew you actually did not hear whatever I was saying. Because I kept on looking at you, and you were not there at all. So now I have picked this. Now, I'm giving you this as an example. So if I were to assume that you were talking to him because you are bored, you thought I'm a very boring lecturer, you thought that this class has no value, and uh, you know, uh, I don't know what your intention is, but I think it's very disrespectful. That's an example. Now, this can lead to conflict. But if I give you the opportunity, or I even do something else that help me understand you better, then I could defuse the conflict. So now, you guys tell me, what should I do? What is the antidote to this? What should I do so that, so that I understand him? And I don't make this become a conflict. What should I do? Yes? I want someone to say it, please. How do I understand others? I talk to them. So I say, uh, you know, uh, Let's go for lunch. <laughs> Something like that. Then he say, don't have lunch with you. Yeah. So do I just talk to people? Just talk randomly? What do we do to understand others? Yes? OK, ask for the reason. I think, I think we need to capture this. So what should I do? Ask for the reason why they're talking. I ask for the reason why you're talking. Like that. So you always talk. Not only you ask come for the late, reason why they're talking. and then you I don't attend the, the class. Now you, when you come, like you that. talk. Is it like that? You always talk. No, only that doesn't sound late. like it. OK, who else wants to try? What should we do? Class. Yes. Now you, when you come, you talk. Have like an that? empathy for them. No. That so if sound I like were okay, to empathize to with what him, yes. before I have an empathy for them. make a decision, before I decide that he is disrespectful to me, I need to decision. put myself I into his shoes. I go and imagine that, that it's 12 something, maybe he's hungry, maybe he was telling him about some lunch plans. What was it all about actually? Was it related to lunch? 
he's hungry. No. Maybe Can you share it? It's very home. private. Some lunch plans. What was it all about? But it would help me empathize with him if you could. No. Can you share it? It's very private. Yeah. Okay, let's get the mic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. The question is, for me to empathize, I need to really put myself in his position and imagine. So I have to actually say, is, maybe is, this is not disrespectful. Maybe he's hungry. Really maybe it's lunch. So I was thinking if you could help me imagine, by so telling us what was say, this discussion this all about, or then I would be in a better position to put myself in his position and in the future keep on empathizing with him. Then I would be in a better position to put myself in his position and in the future keep on empathizing with him. Okay, can you just tell us what did you tell him? <laughs> okay, can you just tell us what did you tell him? Sports. It's about sports. And what was that? No, it was it, you just tell us, I mean, it's, it's not that it's private, sports. right? No, no, no. Yes. And what was that? Football. Yeah. Was it, you just tell us, I mean, okay, well, so what, what, was the, what was it exactly? Oh, no. So it was like, Sports, MU played football, what? Did you just tell us what did he tell you? I don't think he told you every okay, well, results in the. Uh, exactly. So it was like, MU played what? Did you just tell us what did he tell you? I don't think he told you every upcoming game, which is? In the, uh, which is? Did you just tell me, please. No, no, you are talking I'm about. I'm so sorry. Oh. Game, so it's my mistake. You see, which can is, you imagine how? Me, yes. No, I caught him before sentence. he finishes his question. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Kashmir. Yes, I'm so sorry. And then I you, you caught so, him. So you're, you you're passionate him, yeah. about football? Yes. Yes. I'm so sorry, yes. yes. And, and what was yes. the. I'm I will so allow you now to so, uh, finish so you're, your you're sentence. What, what, what will you just tell him? Yes, please, yes. please. Please tell him. Please tell him. I will allow you now to finish your sentence. Yeah. What, what yes. will you just tell him? Yeah, say it. Say it. Yes, please, please. Please tell him. Please tell England? So you just say yes, it's England. England or something, right? What was the question? Yes, it's England. Ask him the question. What was the so question? Yes, it's England. Please. <laughs> he asked won, me again, so I just answered his question. What was the question? Oh, England and Germany, who won? And you what tell, tell him it was England. Please. Okay, who, suppo who supports England? Who won against England and Germany? Germany. Who supports oh, Germany? England and Germany, who won? And you tell him okay. it was England. Okay. Great. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. wonderful. Germany. Thank you very much. So, so what I'm trying to say here is... Okay. Great. What I'm trying okay. to say wonderful. here... Thank you very much. And I'm... This is... This is, this is serious. Yeah, what I'm trying to say here is it's actually very easy, it's very easy for me to presume that this discussion is a sign of disrespect. But if they are very passionate about the game and maybe they don't have, he doesn't have internet or maybe he never heard of that he could actually check the uh, the, the results on, online, and then he's asking the person that he thought would know, and that's a very important thing for him, because maybe he wanted to ask, because if he keep on thinking, who won, who won, who won, then he won't even pay attention to the rest of the class. So he just said, let me just ask and know who won, and that's it. So when I put myself into his position, I hopefully can, you know, empathize, and I can uh, be, you know, in his position, and then through that, I develop a better understanding of, of that individual. So the first source or, or uh, source of conflict, we said it could be man, uh, misunderstanding ourselves. So that's be misunderstanding our wants, our needs, our feelings, and so on and so forth. And the exercises that we do with self-awareness are very useful in developing this. Now, when we talk about understanding others as an antidote to misunderstanding them, then empathizing with them before I presume that this is an action that's against me, this is a bad intention towards me or towards my group of people or towards my family or towards my university or whatsoever, I have to empathize, build a bond with the individual, and see how we can go uh, from there. Now, the, the third part that I would like to introduce to you is really misunderstanding the environment. 
One of the reasons why we also have conflict is there is a fear of loss. So if, if I have this, he will lose it. And that could be a source of conflict. And if he has it, I don't have it, but I, I want it. Now we talked about first understanding, do I really want it? Do, do I really need it? And maybe I do. Now for him, does he really want it? Maybe yes. Does he really need it? Maybe still yes. Now that creates a scarcity, that creates the same thing both of us want, both of us need. And that could lead for us fighting over that resource. And, and, and that's the situation where we feel like being a hostage. There's no choice. I have no, no other choice. I need this. I have to take it. It's very necessary for me. And for him, he said, no, but this is mine and I also need it. Then we create a situation in which he either, I win and he loses, or he wins and I lose. And, and that's, again, a misrepresentation of the environment. I would like to suggest that there will always be a third alternative. So whenever you are in a conflict within your family, your, when you work within your company or uh, within your team now, and the conflict is over one thing. So for example, who does this? Is it my job or my job? You see, the moment you have only two things and they are opposite to each other, so it's either you do it or I do it, you think, can I have a third alternative? And the third alternative could be, Sogdish will do it. I don't know, but this is, this is an example. But the moment we say, no, it's you. No, 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 it's you. That's the moment we need to pay attention for. It's not only two alternatives. Often you have actually multitudes of alternatives. But what I want you to do is to search for the third alternative first. And sometimes that alternative could be even superior to either you having this or me having it. So this is, this is something that I wanted, I wanted to, to, um, to, to, to tell you. That, there is actually a story, it's a real story about, uh, about, uh, about the environment and how you could uh, look for maybe a third, uh, third alternative. There was an oil company somewhere in the Middle East and, and the government has given them you know, that piece of land to, uh, to drill for, uh, for oil. But that land has been used by some uh, nomads people, you know, they are, it's not really their land, they don't have a grant for it, but they've been living there for quite some time and they, they, um, uh, they grow uh, wheat there. So suddenly this oil company came in and they started, you know, putting uh, marks on the ground and uh, they are indicating that work will start within, uh, let's say, a month or so. So what would you do if you are the farmer? So the farmers have their uh, wheat there and suddenly this big company with, with uh, big equipments and even some police escorts are going to take their land. They, they got it by law, the government has given it to them. And the, the situation escalates. So the company send some people to start the work the villagers or the farmers go and attack these people. The people run away, luckily no one dies. And they say, it becomes like, okay, you come here, you wanna kill me, I'll, I'll fight until death. Until someone came and say, okay, you as farmers, you see, this is actually the land now belongs to them. And, 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 and maybe you could have some other piece of land, but this land has a potential because it has, it has petrol. So why, why you are so, agitated and emotional about it. So the farmers say, look, we will be harvesting, we will be, you know, uh, the, our, our, our uh, you know, crop in one month. And these people are disturbing us. So you go to the company and say, will you, will you be starting to 
to do that drilling right now? No, 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 we will need six months of taking samples and things like that. So can you guys take the samples without disturbing the rest of the crop so that until the farmers come and you know, uh, do the harvest and then um, uh, you, you can carry on later? Yeah, I guess we could do that. So the moment you see a third alternative, maybe is not necessarily in this case superior for both, but at least there is a way that you could you know, have what you want and in a way I have what I want. The uh, potential for a bigger uh, conflict has been diffused. And, and these things do happen, you know. Uh, all you need is an accident happen or someone gets shot to make it very, very difficult to resolve later because now the damage that has been done cannot be undone. So if someone is, lo loses his or her life, even if you pay them a compensation, you won't bring them back to life. And that creates a very negative and a long lasting uh, uh, effect. Okay, so, so we agreed that the conflict happens mainly because of some sort of misunderstanding. And, and, and the misunderstanding could be of ourselves. What do we really want? What do we really need? So there are people who will, whatever you have, they want. And, that, and they will be always prone to conflict. This happens actually among children. Uh, children, if, if he's my brother and he's playing with this, I want this. So if he gives it to me, oh, I'm not interested anymore because now he's playing with this, so I want this. So this is, this is in a way, when you don't know, when I don't know what do I really want, how do I feel, this could, because of the self-misunderstanding, could lead into conflict. And again, if I don't know, what his intentions are, the other, or I don't understand how does he feel, or what does he really want, this also opened the door for conflict. So the first conflict, the antidote to it is our, my emotions today, the accurate self-assessment, uh, your mission, all these things tells you, is this really important for you? Is this what you want? Because you have assessed yourself, you have an accurate self-assessment. And that will tell you what you should let go, what you should fight for. What is important for you, what is not that important. For the second part, which is the misunderstanding others, the antidote would be really empathy, building a bond, appreciating that uh, person for, for uh, who he is or who she is and trying to find some connection with them. So the moment we understand them, understand their situation, really be in their shoes, then we can empathize with them and there's a potential that we diffuse some uh, conflict. Finally is the environment and that's the, the, um, the uh, illusion of scarcity because we always think of the resources as being limited, and if you have it, then I will lose it. And if I have it, then you will lose it. And that feeling of loss, we as humans, we don't like to lose. The loss is a very, very bitter, very negative feeling. So we will always need to look for the third alternative in which hopefully both of us win, and hopefully both of us win more. So this is how uh, I would like you to think of conflict, and this is how I would like you to try to uh, diffuse uh, conflict. Now I'll talk about sources of conflict, and this comes from uh, a book that's called Hostage at the Table by George uh, Coliza. This gentleman was, actually used to work for the, for the police, and he was a, a, a hostage negotiator. And uh, later he, um, you know, he got in his PhD and he moved into uh, teaching at business schools and he realized that there are so many times that we are taken hostage. Sometimes taken hostage by our environment and most of the time we are taken hostage 
by our uh, by our ourselves actually and our beliefs and he has this very um, interesting thought I've attended one of his training that you always have a choice you always have a choice so so the choice that you have let me give you an example if I hit him does he have a choice? Who says no choice, raise your hand? Who says he has choice, raise your hand? Okay, so what are the choices that he has? Where's the mic? Yeah. So j just tell us something, what you've just said. So I, if, if I hit him, what are the choices that he has? Uh, hit you back. He can hit me back, that one choice. So that's, he has only one choice. <laughs> oh, don't hit you back. And don't hit me back. So he actually could choose to react and hit me back. He could just do nothing. Does he have more choices? OK, there are more choices. OK. What else can he do? I appreciate the way you hit. <laughs> so he can appreciate the way I hit. And, and, and actually, this is very important. This is very important. So when next time you are hit, you realize that you actually have a choice to hit back, a choice to say nothing, and a choice to say, wow, sir, that was really good. Yeah, so this is, these are choices. And, and now imagine that I tie him to the wall. Does he have, what choices does he have now? Do you think he will have choices? Yeah. Yes. Can you just say a couple of these choices that he has? He can either uh, untie himself. Right, so I tie him very well, he cannot even untie himself. Okay, um, he can say thank you. He can say thank you, <laughs> yeah. or he can um, or he can say very nasty things to me. Maybe he can cry. He can cry. Yeah. That's also a choice. Yes. Uh, he can, you know, ask someone to help him. You know. And uh, shout for help. Yeah, now, yeah. what if I put, uh, you know, a duct tape on his mouth? So he now cannot shout, cannot say thank you. Kick you. He can kick me, but I, I tied him very well. There is no movement. There is no sound that can come of him. He cannot do anything. In a sound. So, so he can actually think yeah, he can positively. Think, yeah. He can think, think negatively. You see, you will always have a choice. And this is a very interesting thing. Now, what this gentleman told me is that when you negotiate with a hostage taker, okay? You are, you are negotiating with a hostage taker. These are people who are very desperate. Most of the time, they will either get killed or they will go for jail for a very, very long time. And if you make the hostage taker feel that he or she does not have a choice, what will happen? Please stay with me, listen to the question. And the question is, if someone, if you are a hostage negotiator and you call the guy in and you tell him, look, we've locked the place. There's no way you will come out alive from this. No matter what you do, you, the best thing that you can do is you, you come out. When you really limit the choices of the hostage taker and you put him under that pressure, what will happen? Yeah, can someone, yeah? Someone says some, something here. Did I imagine that? Murder. M murder. murder. So, so he will, he may kill. Yeah, he'll kill the hostage. He called the hostage, okay. So do you know how do, how do hostage negotiators give the hostage taker the feeling of choice? You can kill only one. Give them what they want. Okay, so, so, so what, 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 is, what, what do they want? So they want me to release their uh, friends who are in jail. They have killed a thousand people in a terrorist attack. If you release my, 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 my friend, then 
I will, I will let the hostage go. And I, have, and, you, and I want an airplane that is fueled, and I want a million dollars. Will you give him what they want? Yes, we have to make him think that, that we give them what they want. So, so you, 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 you listen to this, and maybe these are some of the things that you watched in movies, but I personally did not appreciate when I see them in the, in the movie. So the guys say, look, I have hostages, send food. Okay? So we say, fine. What would you like to have? Just, just send any food, man. Anything will do. No, sir, what, what would you like to have? Okay, okay, send pizza. Okay, what, what kind of pizza? <laughs> so, what do you mean what kind of pizza? Why do you, you want thin crust, double decker? Uh, do you want vegetarian? So, the more you give the person a feeling that he is or she is having a choice, she is making a choice, you will be able to widen the scope in the situation that you are in. Now, he told me how he um, uh, deals with these, with these hostage takers when they are out, when they, are, you know, they, they, they manage to make them surrender. So he said it's a procedure that the hostage taker has to be handcuffed. That you, you cannot, he cannot go without being handcuffed. So he will ask him, would you like me to handcuff you like this or like that. And this, you know, after a while actually build that connection and build that respect. So you need to understand that even when you, it seems that I have forced you to come here, it seems that you have to really sit, you actually do have a choice. And I could bring you here, and I could force you to sit here. You could make a choice to look at me, pretend to listen, and not listen. And that's your choice. But the key thing is, you need to remember that this, whose choice is this? It's your choice. No matter what, I could put you in jail. I could torture you. There's no way I could control the endless thought patterns that you could create. And these are all choices. So I want you to always remember that when you want to create the third or fourth alternative. So let's look at the sources of conflict. You have difference in goals. So he want to do one thing. I want to do something else. So how do we, do, how do we um, um, resolve this? looking at the three understand, uh, misunderstandings. How can we resolve this uh, from uh, self-understanding point of view? So you and I have different goals. So my goal is for you to sit here and listen to me for two hours. Your goal is to go out and watch football. There's a different in goals. And this, there is a potential of conflict here. So from a self-understanding, how do we, how can we diffuse this uh, conflict? And do like different times. Come again? No, so, so this is from, not, not, not from a third point of view, thir uh, third, third alternative. This is from a self-understanding point of view. How would we resolve this? Of understanding. Yeah, so, so you want to go and watch football. Okay. I want you to stay here and listen to me for two hours. Okay? So now, there's a potential of conflict. The conflict, you'll just move out and I will feel very angry and I'll fail you or something like that. Okay. So now, before you do this, from a self-understanding point of view, what would you tell yourself trying to diffuse this conflict or resolve it? I can stay for two hours and then after that I go in. Yes, but how did you do this from a, a, a self-understanding? How did you use, use your self-awareness to achieve this? Uh, 
You see, there are three misunderstandings, right? Okay. So one is you, you misunderstand yourself. The other one is you misunderstand me. The other one is you misunderstand the environment. environment. Likewise, there are, for me, there are three misunderstandings. One is I misunderstand myself. Second, I misunderstand you. And three, number three is I misunderstand the environment. And I realize that you either be here or you watch the game. They cannot be. So that's the environment, which we could work it out somehow. Right? But I, wanna, I want you now to think of this from a self-awareness point of view. How would you resolve this conflict from a self-awareness point of view? If you are self-aware, how would you resolve this? Isn't that the way that uh, I could listen to for two hours and then... I yes, yes, you could listen to two hours and, after that. and, and understand nothing keep on thinking of the game, feel miserable, hate me. Yes, you can do that, yes. But I'm saying that from a self-understanding point of view, how would you do it? Uh, mm. okay, anyone else would like to help him? Would you like to try? Uh, okay. Adi, yes. Please stay with us. Maybe I will do your goal and after two hours, for example, you will do my goal. Right. So, so, so this is very similar to what he did. So you, 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 you stay with me, but by the time the, go the game is finished, you can watch it, but it's uh. a replay. You already know, everyone knows the results. You are the only one in the world who didn't watch it. You hate me. You feel very bad. But from a self understanding point of view, how would you use your understanding of your own self to actually resolve this conflict? Uh, for example, I will do your goal and after we decided what I, wa what I want and... But will you be happy? And you will... Okay, you good. Will but will you me. be happy? I think yes, because I, uh, I will know about that you will be help me, because I help you. Okay, so what, what you are saying here is, from a self-awareness point of view, you say, okay, okay, actually what do I really want? To watch the game? Or my smart goal, which is to pass the semester and finish engineering? I think, I think my, my smart goal is, to do well in the course. Hmm, I, oh yeah, I think, I think the game can wait, it's just a game. Then now you understand really what you want. What you want really, really deeply is not to watch the game. You are here to get your qualification. And that's very important. Then through that self-understanding, then you can actually make yourself endure. Rather than you sit, say, okay, I'll watch a replay. Mm. I really hate you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Self awareness. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, you get me? But if you say if you say to yourself, okay, let me understand what what, what is really important for me. Is is this and 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 if you decide that what is important for you is the game. For whatever reason. And because it's the game then, and because this lecture is going to be recorded anyway, and you can watch it later, you can ask your friend if he is there to explain it to you, and he explains to you better than the lecturer anyway, then you will go for the game. But I want you to make it as in, in that way. And then you could explain to me and say, look, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be an engineer in the first place. I actually want to be a footballer, and this is more important for me, for example. But what I want you to do is, Instead of sliding into the conflict, because you could stay, I could force you to stay, and you could you know, think very negatively and not watch the game, and at the same time benefit nothing from the lecture, but, but if you ask yourself a deeper question about yourself, what do you really want? Do you really want to watch the game? Is it really, really that important? Then you may realize that we don't even have a conflict in the first place. So that's what I meant, how do you resolve it? from, uh, 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 what do you call that, from a, a self-awareness point of view. Now you could resolve it from 
A third alternative, this is a key lens itself. The example that I've given you lends itself to third alternative very, very easily. We could say, okay, can we watch for an hour and then we come back to do the lecture? Can we watch the game together and then we do the lecture later? Oh, and, and things like that. Or can I just sit and I watch a replay and I ask my friends not to tell me the results? This is also uh, a possibility, okay? We, ha we may have differences in interest. So the differences in interest happen when something happen, I will benefit, and maybe you will not, go, you will not get any benefit. And sometimes the, the, uh, the situation actually happens when I win and you lose. And sometimes it happens when your parents want you to study, but you want to do something else. Or your parents want you to do engineering, but you want to do architecture or whatever. So this is the different in interest. Can anyone uh, uh, give me an example of uh, how to find uh, maybe a third alternative if your parents want you to do course A and you want to do course B? So how will you do it from... Uh, either a third alternative point of view, the environment, or from uh, understanding others. Anyone, any volunteer? If no volunteer, I'll pick our world-class caller. Yeah. I have plenty of examples. I've, I'll get everyone to say something today. Is the question clear? Yeah. So your parents want you to do medicine. You want to do engineering and now you don't do it from a uh, self-understanding point of view you try to resolve it from either understanding others or understanding the other alternatives in the environment um, if my parents really want me to do medicine and they're really determined and insisted me to do so and I really got no choice. I have to understand them as their daughter that I'll do medicines. But, but, but will you just do medicine or will you understand why they want you to do medicine first? Um, I'll understand, th understand them first. Right. And then you will just do it. So you won't you want try to do a, a third alternative? Because my parents want to do me medicine, want me to do medicine only if I do the others one, is the same as I go into my own interest as an engineer. Okay, so you will so give up your dream. Um, I will try to pursue persuade my parents first before I really. So you will do them. medicine for six years, and then five years. Give yeah. five years, then give them the certificate. Say, okay, I've done this for you. I'm going to do engineering. So don't don't disturb me. Will you do that? Um, it's also another choice. That's another choice, yes. Learning never stops. Right. Yeah, we learn forever, okay. so, yeah. Okay. So, so what she says is, if they really want it, she will understand why, and, and this is a, quite a respectable course as well, and she will do it. So she will do medicine first, and then she see, maybe she starts to like medicine, and if not, then she will be uh, maybe starting another degree in engineering. Anyone else would like to offer an, an, another way of doing that? Amma, you want to try? Sure. Okay. Um, maybe if my parents have wanted me to do medicine and I don't want to do engineering. Yes. Um, I would, I would say that we both sides should go to a, a counselor, maybe a third party right. that that can um, give his or her opinion. Right. Because um, they can clear up um, well the arguments are basically right, right, wonderful. So the, another way is instead of it's between just you and I, I'm your parent and you. You say, okay, can we just go and seek a third opinion? And maybe through that, maybe I change my mind, or maybe my parents will change their mind. So that's that's you see. There are now anyone else would like to give another alternative? Another different alternative. So she will follow. He said, before I follow, we 
maybe go and seek help from a specialist, a counselor or someone at the university. What else would you do? Anyone else would like to try? What would you do if this happened to you? Honestly. If this happened to me, I would ask my sisters because one of them is an engineer and the other one is a medicine. Right. Which, which cause will have a better uh, employment and a wider uh, right. So I will ask from both opinions and which one is more better for me to take. Yeah, but that's you. But what about if them? So, so, but that's from your point of view, right? But what about my parents point from your parents' point of view? Because the parents will say, okay, you, you do medicine. Okay, so let's say the sisters say it is engineering is better for you. You still have the conflict. So, if my parents want me to take medicine, I just take medicine. If I cannot go with it, I just tell my parents. Right. And then I take engineering. Right. So you will try first, yeah. and then mm. later, if you st really didn't like it, then you. And there are actually. Thank you very much. There are there are many many alternatives to uh, to uh, you know to answer to answer uh, this, including including maybe convincing them if you want to do engineering. Uh, you will do engineering, but you will, uh, I don't know, make uh, medical equipments eventually. So you are still uh, connected to, uh, to, to, to that field. So that's when, when the interests are, are different. And, and as I told you, the, different, the interests could be a, a, a genuine kind of, uh, genuinely they think this degree is better because they are parents, or it could be uh, there is a transaction and I want to cheat you. And if, the more I cheat you, the more I win, and the more you lose. We may have differences in, in, in values. We have, we have a different value system. I, I value, uh, you value freedom very highly. I value stability very, high, very highly. So for you, you want a job that will allow you all the freedom in the world. To me, I say, no, no, you think about employability. So again, depending on what is the source of the uh, conflict, you will always can go and say, if I would understand myself better, how would I do it? And if I were to understand the party with which I'm having the conflict better, will that change the situation? And you could also say, is there any other third alternative? Is there anything else that we can do? So he wants to meet now. And I say, I cannot meet now then can we like do it over Skype because I'm away? Can we do it over the phone rather than you either have meeting or no meeting? But the meeting is necessary and I understand this, but at the same time, I need to be in the hospital because maybe my family member is there. But I will be able to, you tell me what you want me to deliver and I'll deliver it rather than just say, are you coming or not? You know, you have been missing, missing meetings for so long and I'm going to complain to the lecturer about you these are, these are, sounds familiar, maybe you had a similar experience. So you always ask yourself these three questions in terms of misunderstanding. Now, the other key, why I'm, I'm putting the sources of conflict, you need to be, you need to understand what is the source of conflict. So is it, is it that we have different goals? So for example, if we are in the same team and we need to build a robot, the goals are clearly the same. So how come we still have a conflict? If the goal is the same, is the interest different? Maybe the interest is you want, you want to show off and you want to show that you've done all the work and I didn't do the work. So that's, that's a conflict of interest. So we need to understand what is the source of the conflict. Now, sometimes there's a difference in communication style. So, so for example, I like to talk, but my, my team, um, team member doesn't like to talk. She likes to send emails. So we say, are we, do we agree on this? She keeps quiet. Then we go, we go home, she sends an email, say, actually, I disagree with everything that you've said. Th these, are, these are real things, you know. People do have different 
preferences in terms of communication. There are people who would like to talk, there are people who talk less, there are people who would like to do it in writing, there are people who want to do it in different ways. So we need to, again, ask ourselves. So for example, if this guy only sends emails, so I ask myself, can we do it over the email? So, or should I have, have to do it um, you know, uh, verbally? Uh, differences in power and, and, and status. This, ha this can happen in family, can happen in a team, can happen in a company. So if, for example, a person would like to show that he or she is of higher uh, status or, or, or uh, having power or being the boss and does this on the expense of the other team members, that can be a source of conflict. Again, how do we deal with that? First, let me understand myself. Secondly, let me understand the other. Is it really that that person doing it for manipulating the power structure? Is that true? And then, is there any other way we can do it differently so that we don't have to run through, uh, through this? Uh, insecurity. So there are, if, if someone is insecure, uh, incompetent. So for example, uh, we, we make uh, this robot, right? So this is a robot. Now, he is the one who made the robot. He is the one who made the robot. He is the one who did most of the work. I don't know how to program. I also don't know how, uh, you know how the thing works. And I feel very insecure. I feel something is wrong. If the lecturer come and test me, I'm going to be in a very bad situation. But I want to be in the team. You know, with the team, I'm OK, because he's, he's there. He can control it. He can do it. So this creates. A, creates a conflict. And the conflict could be, I try to even you know, harm him just to protect myself. So we need to understand this. We need to diffuse it. Again, is this really my, my, my motive or not? Can we do it differently? Can I, for example, learn from you? Can I help you be as good as I am so that you don't have to, to hide and find a third alternative that will create the bond rather than create the conflict between us? So now you become my teacher rather than the one who you know, if you leave me, I'm, I will be in a bad uh, position. Resistance to change could be uh, a source of conflict as well. So um, your uh, parent has a very nice career move, is a new job with much higher salary but requires that you guys move to a different city or a different country, then you have to leave behind uh, you know, your friends or the people that you love. And that creates, because of the change, could create a conflict. Again, you need to ask yourself the same questions. What is more important to me? Is it important that I stay here or I follow my, my parents? Uh, why my parents are doing that? Is that they are actually so cruel, they think only of themselves, they are just career oriented, or they're actually doing it for the family as well? And likewise, is there a way that we find a third alternative? Is there a way that your father moves and you stay wherever you are you know, to finish your, 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 your studies? Maybe you stay with some relatives. There are ways, you know, a third alternative. So always ask yourself one, two, three questions. And these questions could, you know, to resolve the conflict, you may use all the three, depend, depending on you know, the situation that, uh, that you, are, you are in. Uh, role confusion. So role confusion happens, again, in teams and, 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 and companies when uh, we agree, or I think that we agree, you will do this work. And I go thinking that this is going to be done by you. But you thought, no, this is going to be my work. So there's a confusion on what is your role, what is my role, what is your job, what is my job. And that is a potential for conflict again. So this is, these things need to be uh, uh, clear. Search for ego and identity. This is a big source of conflict. There are people who would always like to be under the limelight. They will always have to be the one who found the idea. They are the on, always the one who, um, who want the credit to go to them just because they want you know, to, to inflate uh, their ego. And again, 
your, your, uh, your uh, questions would be, is this really an ego-related thing? Because you, you need to add to, so yes, this guy really has this uh, ego issue. Now, to me, what is he claiming or she is claiming? Is it important? Do I really want to have a conflict over that or I just don't care? No, I really have, uh, this is very important to me because this is my work. And if that person claims that he did the work, my mark is going to be affected. Now, is there a third way? Is there a way that I could help that person? Is there a way that I could speak to the lecturer? Is there a way that I could join another team? There are many ways to, to deal with this. But I want you to go through the structure. Structurally in your mind, you have one, two, and three. Uh, personal needs sometimes may create a, a, a conflict as well. For example, uh, if any one of you have um, maybe a sick family member and you need to, uh, to be with them, to give them the medicine, that that creates a situation in which you don't come to the class or you don't come to the team, uh, team meeting. And, and that's, that's, that's a real situation. And this could create a lot of stress and a lot of uh, uh, tension and could lead to uh, conflict. Again, the same three questions that you, 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 you asked. So can we, for example, is this really the situation? Okay, why is that person doing it? Is he doing it because he disrespects the team or he's doing it because he respects his family? So he, he's doing it to respect the family. Now, to me, um, what am I feeling about that? Am I feeling like unfair or can I feel uh, instead of this uh, pride in him or her doing their job towards their family? Thirdly, if that person needs to be there in the morning because the mother is working, but in the evening when the mother comes back, he will be a bit more free. So can we move our meetings to that time so that we cater for his needs? A third alternative. Can he have the meeting over Skype or over the phone while he is, you know, attending to his or her um, sick family member? A third, a fourth option always is available. Always it's available. And we need to always keep our mind thinking, what's the third option? Okay? Uh, finally, poor communication is, uh, is, uh, is an issue. So sometimes people... They talk in a way that is not clear, and that creates uh, confusion. And um, so if we are the source of confusion, we need to have the accurate self-assessment so that we improve it. And if the other person is the source of confusion, we need to create a mechanism in which we are sure what the person has meant before we leave the meeting. Maybe we document it to ensure that. So you mean this is yours or mine? Oh, this is, yeah, so you, are you sure you'll be doing this? Yes, yes. Can you, can you tell me that, uh, okay, I'm sure, so this is your role. So when I leave, there's no more confusion. Now, I would like to share with you uh, some um, conflict management strategy um, that uh, came from um, one of the authors that work also very closely with uh, Daniel Goldman. Her name is uh, Linda Lantieri, and uh, she came up with this called Resolving Conflict Creatively. Um, she had a personal experience as well that I would like maybe later to, to relate it to, uh, to you guys as well. So, sh so she says, first thing, you need to calm down and tune into your feelings and express them. So what do you feel in the moment of conflict? You Calm down, take a deep breath, and you do sort of my emotions today. How, do I, how am I feeling now? And then express your feeling. Then you show willingness to work things out by taking the issue rather than escalating it, talking over the issue rather than escalating it into uh, more aggression. Now, the first one is really about understanding you. The second one is about here uh, more towards understanding uh, the others. And finally, try to find equitable ways to resolve the dispute. So this is finding the third alternative. So the story that I, I want to share with you, she was once 
uh, going back at night and a uh, few teenagers came to her and put a knife at you know, her neck and they say, give me your purse. So it's at night, three or four teenagers are attacking you and one of them is having the knife. So what did she do? She said, I'm a little uncomfortable here. So these people are a bit confused what's, what, what is happening. And then she said, and you guys are too close. Would you mind stepping back a bit? And she was looking down and she saw the shoes of the guy going back. And then, and you know, this knife is really making me uncomfortable and someone could get hurt. Could you please remove the knife? And that kid just put the knife back. Then she took her wallet and then she took $20 from it. And she say, who should I give this to? Talking to the guy with the knife. So he said, me. Then she looked at the others, is it okay to give it to him? And they say, yes. So she gave them the $20. You know what happened after this? These three kids run away from her. I think what she did, she changed the structure. She could have fought back, and most likely when she fight back, what will happen? Maybe they will stab, stab her. Or she could have like, cried and make the, these, or, or shouted, and they make them even more panic, and again, maybe would have escalated it. So she chosen to just describe the way she feels. So she tuned in and said, I'm uncomfortable. You know, when, for those of you who do my emotions today, Sometimes, even for me, when I don't have the word, I actually scan through what other people have written, and that gives you a lot of vocabulary, a lot of adjectives to, to speak about. So you feel very uncomfortable. I feel scared. But the way she expressed it, that's the last thing that the, the attacker expected from her to do. So this, is, this um, uh, this, this story is uh, related in one of uh, Daniel Goldman's books, so and I encourage you, as I said, uh, to, to read it. But if you, if you think, interestingly, she went into herself first, so you go in, then you go out trying to find ways these kids, maybe they need money, they want money, I will give them something. But she, she changed the dynamic of, of the situation. She worked with, um, uh, with, the, with the U.S. schools to work on bullying and, and gangsterism in schools and things, uh, things like that. So the conflict always can be um, traced to uh, its roots in terms of uh, misunderstanding. And the misunderstanding could be for ourselves, for the others, or for the environment, which could actually provide us with more alternatives that we can uh, uh, use so that it's more equitable and caters for my needs and the needs of the other party. I just wanted to um, talk to you about uh, developing others again. So by show of hands, uh, who did not attend my class last Friday? So, so you raise your hand so that I can see it, Kashmenda, yeah. Only f five, I thought. Who attended? So did you attend or you did not attend? Did you attend? Did you raise your hand when I say who did not attend? Yeah, so what we have, thank you very much. So what we have done, because developing others is a very important, uh, very important part of relationship management. And developing other does not only help the person that I am developing, but it helps even the developer. So what we have done, we've paired people into pairs of two. Where's Rex? Is he in today? He's not. So for example, 
uh, Rex and uh, Madi became partners, and the exercise goes like this. Uh, Madi will ask Rex about his vision, mission, and his accurate self-assessment through the SOAC framework, as well as his SMART goal. But while he's doing this, uh, he is writing this down. So Madi writes, what is Rex's vision? What is Rex's mission? What's Rex's uh, uh, SMART goal? And what is his SOAC? And we requested SMART goals that can be achieved by the end of the semester. So things related to something you want to write, a result you want to achieve, a language capability you'd like to develop. Then the same exercise is repeated. So now Rex asks Madi the same questions, and Rex writes those down. Now interestingly, now they are mission partners. Now, Rex mission and goals written by Madi's hand is with Madi. So it's like a commitment that you made and you are keeping it with your friend. And likewise, Madi's goals are kept, treasured nicely with Rex. Now what I asked them to come and do here is to, for Madi to look at, at Rex and say, you want to do this, that's your smart goal, and I believe that you can do it. And Rex does the same thing for Madi. Now what I also requested is every week, every partner to send the other partner an encouraging message that's related to the smart goal to keep the momentum going up. So if, you, if your smart goal is to get a GPA of 3.5, I keep on repeating, I, I hope that you are, uh, you are doing well, and I have no doubt that you are going to achieve your goal. Friend, you are awesome, and I believe that you can do it. Keep it up. So this could be done through a text, through an email, you tag him or her on open learning, is entirely up to you, but I just want the momentum to carry on. I have done uh, a test, I think quite a number of you, did you send any message to Rex? Oh, I'm sorry. There is a save. Right, yeah, so you, 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 need, you need to, you need to you, every day you say, what do you say every day? Every day I say to Max, I believe that you can do. Good, so you, every time you see him, th does he do the same to you? Yes. Th does that make you feel better that there is someone who actually... Yes. Okay, very good. So now what I would like you to do is for those people who did not attend my class on Friday, can you please look for a partner and do the same exercise? I cannot... This is something that is really has to be internalized. I cannot force you to do it. Even if I force you to do it, you will do it not full-heartedly and it won't work. But believe me, this could be um, a very powerful tool that you could use even when you want outside the classroom uh, with your friends or with your other family members. Okay? So uh, if you don't have, do you have any question about what we have uh, discussed today? Any comment? Uh, if you have none, then I would like to thank you very much for uh, today. And uh, I really hope that those who don't have mission partners to have mission partners by, uh, I will check it tomorrow. So tomorrow I will want you to show me, Kashmenda, please, you need to stay with us. I want you to show me your, the paper that, you ha that has the vision, the mission, the name, uh, the SOAC, and the SMART goal of your partner. Uh, please do it on a neat paper and de treat it with respect. And if you would like to keep it until, you know, whatever, that would be great. If you, if, you, if you stop this partnership by the end of the semester, please don't just throw the piece of paper in the rubbish. Please very respectfully pass it back 
to the person because these are the dreams and aspiration of another human being. Thank you very much.